Kent Cliffs, New York, New Year's Eve, 1982. Shortly before midnight in this small town just north of New York City, New Year's Eve revelers are struck by the sight of an unusual aircraft in the sky. The ship appears to be as large as a commercial jet, but has a V-shape, moves slowly, and makes no sound. The incident is the first in a wave of UFO sightings that would shape the surrounding area known as the Hudson Valley. The Hudson Valley is your classic hotspot. Here, UFOs appeared from 1983 to 1986 and was witnessed by thousands of people. A triangular boomerang-shaped object, very well lit, flew very low over the community. And it was photographed, videotaped, and it was seen from people from all walks of life who were sure they saw something strange that was not from this planet. This caused people to pull off the side of the road and actually start calling home, thinking there was some type of an invasion. And there were executive doctors, uh, scientists and so on, meteorologists, and they all reported something that they have never seen before. Over the span of three years, officials received more than 9,000 reports from eyewitnesses describing the same V-shaped craft. Not only was there a UFO sighting in Hudson Valley, but it came back night after night after night. These are people who would not normally come forward to say that they saw a UFO. Oh, good God. I don't know. Not quite. I'm going to tell you something, honey. I don't know what the hell it is. Yet, what they saw was so convincing and so frightening to them that they went on record to report what they saw. I mean, it's just amazing. During the two-year wave of UFO sightings in the Hudson Valley, author Philip Imbrogno investigated the area on behalf of the Center for UFO Studies, which was founded by J. Allen Hynek after his work with Project Blue Book. Imbrogno conducted hundreds of interviews with residents of the area and even witnessed the V-shaped craft himself. This object, whatever it was, the size of a football field, came over the highways and hovered and at times projected down a brilliant beam of white light. Usually UFO researchers don't see the UFO that they're investigating. I saw this object three times. So it was amazing. As Imbrogno spent months crisscrossing the area, he noticed something curious. The volume of mysterious reports during this time were not only focused on a strange craft in the sky, but also on bizarre sounds coming from somewhere deep below ground. People start to wonder, why are these hot spots hot spots? And one explanation is that what is actually going on is underneath the ground, that these hot spots are, in fact, entrances to vast underground cabins or even secret bases. In the Hudson River there, especially in the 80s, I spoke to a few researchers, and they said that the locals used to hear things coming up from underground, and they weren't really quite sure what it was, but they figured there was a base below ground, a military slash alien base. Arguably, the most famous sighting in the Hudson Valley hotspot concerned beings from underground, as was the case with best-selling horror novelist Whitley Strieber, who wrote about his own experience in his book, Communion. My wife and I had bought a cabin in the western extreme edge of the whole Hudson Valley. And in December of 1985, I woke up in a room not my bedroom, in the middle of the night, and the room was filled with two kinds of figure, these willowy figures with big black eyes and dark blue short figures. And then I began to hear a voice say, what can you do to help you stop screaming? And I thought, I'm screaming, and I was screaming. 
And the next morning I woke up extremely confused and disturbed without any real understanding of what happened to me.